Good afternoon, folks, and welcome back to Weather Center Nazario. Before we get into this video, I have a very big announcement. Tonight, during our 8 p.m. Tropics talk in response to Hurricane Otis's catastrophic landfall along the Mexico coastline very early this morning as a Category 5 hurricane, something unprecedented, something historical, something I definitely want to archive internally for forecast review purposes. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what a forecast review is momentarily, but I urge you guys, I want to emphasize this, I urge you to please tune in tonight at our 8 p.m. PM Tropics Talk because I have a plan on how I'd like to use this channel to our advantage to hopefully reach out to those affected by Hurricane Otis and help with relief efforts as best as we can. Details tonight, please tune in Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Tropics Talk, guys. I hope to see you there. Here's the infrared satellite view of Hurricane Otis as he explosively developed overnight yesterday and into this morning, guys. I'm not even going to use the term rapid intensification. Hurricane Otis went full-fledged nuclear warhead and deepened down from a 65-mile-per-hour tropical storm all the way to 160. 65 mile an hour category 5 hurricane just before blowing through Acapulco, Mexico and further inland for that matter as a tropical storm rapidly diminishing now as he encounters the higher terrain features of central Mexico. I will unfortunately not be talking too heavily about Hurricane Otis. There's a lot that I do have to say and again I really want you guys to tune in for our 8 p.m. Tropics talk because it's going to be very unbiased, unfiltered and for that matter very raw going into the nitty gritty of what exactly happened with Hurricane Otis and I'll begin to break down what it is that this internal force forecast review is going to look like not only for this channel's purposes going forward through the latter portions of hurricane season but for many hopefully years to come so we have a lot to cover with hurricane otis just stand by guys we're not going to do it in this video segment here is hurricane tammy believe it or not hurricane tammy has kind of undergone a little bit of rapid intensification of her own strengthening up to 105 mile per hour category 2 storm with central pressure now reading at about 965 millibars on monday morning when we first woke up to an nhc update we had central pressure somewhere between 990 and 993 millibars. So we've seen a pretty sharp decrease in her central pressure. And in response, not only has the storm taken on a much better look on satellite imagery, but she's also strengthened as well and continues to do so despite losing a little bit of that eye and eye wall feature that she saw initially on the satellite imagery. I don't think this is going to last for too much longer. She's already starting to encounter some of the sheer button up against that frontal system and very potent jet activity just to her north that's helping to continue accelerating her off to the north-northeast and it does seem like our model consensus is coming closer together in terms of either A, completely shooting her out to sea after making a slight westward fetch or potentially going full loop-de-loop -loop as she loses a little bit of that steering influence in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere and then once again after making that 360 degree turn moving out to sea and washing out entirely as our next very potent frontal system comes off the United States coastline. So truthfully outside of Bermuda if I have anyone tuning in from the Bermuda Island please continue to investigate this storm. It is currently strengthening and it could strengthen just a little bit more, especially once we get our 5 p.m. update later on this afternoon. So if my interests out there in Bermuda, you got to keep a close eye on this because as of right now, Bermuda is the only imminent land mass that could potentially be affected by Hurricane Tammy. I've completely ruled out the southeastern United States. She could try to make a run for us, but she's going to get hooked and grabbed and pulled out to sea for that matter before she can do anything or come anywhere close to the Bahamas or the southeast U.S. or let alone the mid-Atlantic states for that matter. Now, we're using the four panel here on weathermodels.com because to tell you the truth, guys, outside of the adjustments we've seen with Hurricane Sammy, there really hasn't been a whole lot of change out there in the tropical environment. We have just a little bit more consistency in terms of our models highlighting the potential development out there in the Caribbean, and it looks like Tropical Storm Vince, as the title of this video implies, could very well attempt to try to show himself sometime between Saturday or Sunday of this weekend, if not very early next week as we get into Halloween time here in the United States. Let's go panel by panel, guys. In the top left, we have the GFS. I'll tell you the truth, the GFS has me watching. The GFS has not earned my trust as of yet, but it does have me watching because 0 and 12 Zulu Rottle runs have really been showing decent consistency in terms of development out there in the Caribbean. I definitely think it is off in terms of not only the intensity of our upcoming storm, if it does come together, but I think it is also off in terms of where it is likely to form up. 0Z last night seemed pretty good in terms of where it wanted to develop it just to the south and southwest of the Jamaica Islands, southeast for that matter of the Cayman Islands before moving off to the north-northwest as a 12Z today and even 12Z yesterday for that matter. Forming up more in the eastern Caribbean and then pushing to the west just doesn't seem very likely. It seems like a lot of our model platforms are indicating that our tropical energy is going to take shape somewhere in the southern or southwestern Caribbean. Top right we have the Canadian model. In the bottom left we have our German icon model. In the lower right we have the UK model because all these three model platforms have been doing very good run to 
run in terms of highlighting exactly what we're anticipating to take place in the Southern Caribbean. We take all four panels through their associated loops and you can see right about at the same time all the models are indicating we're going to get some level of low pressure down there in the Central Caribbean right at about the 28th if not the 29th of October you can see all of our models are indicating an area of lower pressure dead center of the Caribbean to the southeast of Jamaica and almost due south of where the Dominican Republic is. The Canadian, the UK, and the ICON models still have this taking shape in the extreme most southern portions of the Caribbean. I do believe that's exactly where we need to watch, kind of about the same area where Tropical Depression 21 suddenly popped off on all of our radars. As you go through time and you continue towards the back end of all these loops, you can see we have a very good amount of agreement between the Canadian, the ICON, and the UK model for that matter, forming up what looks to be at least a tropical storm, if not a very low-end Category 1 hurricane, and pushing it off to the north and northwest before button up against that next major frontal system that's going to come off the United States. The GFS at this point has not gotten itself together. The main reason I'm showing it and the main reason I approve of its run-to-run -run consistency is not because it's highlighting a hurricane, but for the fact that the atmospheric dynamics being put in that analysis data at our 0 and 12Z updates or our model runs for that matter, the GFS is on board with the atmosphere being ready to go in terms of developing some kind of a tropical cyclone. Not necessarily where and how strong of the cyclone on the model that's being depicted, but more or less that the atmospheric dynamics for those cardinal hours 0 and 12 still indicate that, hey, we have good conditions for something to form up. So it's on board in that department. I don't trust it in terms of what it's doing with the intensification and the positioning of that hurricane. We're going to go real time for a second, and I just want to digest exactly what's going on down there in the Caribbean because you can see that the environment is actually already getting itself ready to support any kind of tropical disturbance formation or just a little bit of consolidating in our thunderstorm activity. If you look across the Caribbean right now, we have very good moist air advection occurring across Central America and a newly developed tropical disturbance, which is probably Tropical Depression 21, having exited over into the East Pacific and trying to reorganize and push off to the West, hopefully away from the areas afflicted by Hurricane Otis, but to be determined. I'm not sure of whether or not if National Hurricane Center has highlighted anything as of just yet. I really haven't taken a look at NHC just yet, mainly because they still don't have anything highlighted in our AOR as well for that matter. What's also very interesting is you can see these very, very low open cell cumulus cloud indications rushing off to the east southeast in association with our very, very deep and strong, for that matter, area of cool air that's nestled in across the northeast and that very dense high pressure that's also helping to steer our winds out of a prevailing east northeast or almost easterly direction across the Florida peninsula. Unfortunately, this is likely to keep us fairly dry over the next three to five days and maybe even into the beginning parts of next week into the latter half of next week, for that matter. The reason I bring this up is because we have two very distinct air masses button up against one another right here. It's very interesting that you could see this phenomena occurring almost like clockwork right along this thin band of where you see all of our thunderstorm activity firing off as we get towards the back end of this satellite loop. This is not what I'm thinking is going to form any kind of tropical disturbance. What I'm looking at here, guys, is the fact that we have a tremendous amount of interaction going on, kind of like what we talked about last week in Weather Center, between our equatorial tropical air and this modified dry almost polar air coming off of North America and meeting in the middle right about where Hurricane Tammy is and in between that boundary line, if you will. What I believe this is doing is more or less kind of priming the environment. It's helping to increase our relative humidity, helping to increase our moisture out there. So if and when we do get a little bit of upper level vorticity spinning out over open water in the Caribbean, we're essentially off to the races. If you remember the metaphor I used yesterday, the fuses are soaked with oil and the match just needs to simply be lit or that spark needs to kick things off, that can catalyst, and I think right now we're seeing a little bit more fuel added to our whole area of tinder, if you will. It's a very neat interaction. It's definitely increasing our thunderstorm chances for Honduras, Nicaragua, who already saw the effects of TD21. Belize is starting to see a little bit of it, as well as the Yucatan Peninsula. We have a lot of good thunderstorm activity over Jamaica, Dominican Republic, spanning eastward into Puerto Rico, and maybe even the British U.S. Virgin Islands. All right, so since we don't really have anything else to talk in terms of model data, I showed you our good old four panel. I will tell you that the models that I did not show, the Korean and the European model do have something forming up. The euro is a little steadfast in trying to develop a closed low. However, it does indicate we're going to have a sudden increase in overall instability and vorticity down over the Caribbean, which could indicate that maybe it's trying to come on board with forming some sort of a closed circulation center. And I will tell you that the 12Z and the 0Z Korean model, for that matter, did have a tropical disturbance developing into a depression and a full-fledged tropical storm right around the exact same time frame as I showed you on our four panel of models not too long ago in this video. On the left-hand side, we have our 12Z European ensembles, and on the right-hand side, we have
have our 12Z GFS ensembles. We're looking at both of these side by side because if you track this through time and you get up to that 28th, 29th October time frame, take a look at how our models have very, very good consistency out over the Central Caribbean and incredibly good consistency in terms of what they're thinking Hurricane Tammy could possibly do if you look over to the top hand portion of these charts. As you go a little bit further in time, you can see that both models at about the exact same time start to try to organize a tropical disturbance in the Central Western Caribbean and propagate it in about the same general direction headed off to the north and then eventually the north northeast as that next frontal system really comes down off the United States. This is very interesting because for a while now a lot of our long range model ensembles for that matter wanted to take this storm in the southern Caribbean and propagate it to the north on both charts and other models for that matter and then evacuate it off to the north northeast across the Bahamas. Very typical of what we typically see our systems do in the month of November and at the very tail end of October for that matter. Now it kind of looks like we could have our textbook high pressure system in the Atlantic try to build in back behind Tammy once she gets out of the way. You can already see on both of our charts we have this orange shading beginning to fill in in post succession of Hurricane Tammy evacuating off to the north northeast and I believe that's going to help to increase the prevailing easterlies we have coming across the MDR into the eastern Caribbean and as those prevailing easterly winds off the MDR come across the Caribbean it's only going to influence our system to propagate north and northwest which is a trademark movement we see with storms that form to our south of Florida and of the Caribbean islands. So we're definitely going to have to watch this very closely. We don't have anything textbook or concrete as of yet. We're still a few days away from when we can finally see a bubble of tropical energy take shape out there in the Caribbean, but it's very, very neat to see that both the Euro and the GFS not only have about the same amount of members agreeing we could see development, but if you look very closely at the color depictions, they're almost very close as far as intensity is concerned as well. You could see on the Euro right there, as a matter of fact, it has a major hurricane. In the ensembles, guys, this is not the Euro predicting a major hurricane landfall. It's just going to show you that our ensemble members are also indicating agreement that there could be a pretty substantial storm coming out of the ingredients we have coming together in the Caribbean Sea. If you switch on over to the right-hand side and take a look at the GFS, it goes without saying that that system is also trying to deepen down and get very strong before pummeling into the southwestern coastline of Florida. So this definitely has my eyes, guys, not only for the state of Florida, but for the fact that we have Jamaica, Cayman Islands under the bullseye for a potential impact, Cuba, the Bahamas, if this thing decides to eject a little bit further to the east, we have Haiti and the Dominican Republic, as well as Puerto Rico, that may need to watch out for this. We have a very, very close proximity AOR with all of our islands in the southeast United States and the Gulf Coast for that matter right up against each other so if anything does come together down there just like we saw with Adalia and other storms through the many years we've had hurricane seasons it goes without saying it's going to be a troublemaker for somebody last but not least before we round out this video we're going to conclude with our Canadian ensemble members we're using pivotal weather instead of tropical tidbits today because for some reason it did not populate fully on tropical tidbits so pivotal weather will do the job just fine and as you take this through time and you populate the loop forward you can see that the Canadian ensembles are very very well in agreement that sun is going to come wandering out of the southern Caribbean, moving north towards Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, and then maybe hitting somewhere down in South Florida across the Bahamas before another area of low pressure tries to take shape. Now, don't get this confused, guys. I do see this popping up in social media posts as well as other parts of the internet for that matter. What you see here are the ensembles indicating low pressure. That's it. They're not showing organized systems. You can sometimes delineate between organized systems like we saw in our Euro and GFS ensembles because you'll see individual bubbles of low pressure moving off in different directions. In this case, the reason I say that as that system works its way to the north, that it may potentially impact those aforementioned areas, if you watch right in through here, you see a bubble of low pressure break off from this whole area of lowering pressures across the Caribbean. Watch right in through there, and as I take the loop through, you can see them spread to the north, and we have a few of these low millibar pressure values moving off as well. Then the rest of it continues to stay confined down to the south because that is where the model is in agreement that our lowest area of pressure is likely to be for that millibar threshold. It's a little bit more difficult to see here on pivotal weather because it really doesn't help us to show individual circulations or where our ensemble members are thinking we could see a storm develop and the anticipated tracks like we see on weathermodels.com or tropical tidbits. But nonetheless, if you know how to decipher these screens, you can definitely pick and pull exactly what it is you're looking at and describe it to the best of your ability. You can see down the road that once again, as those lowering pressures continue to increase, increase across Central America and in the Caribbean, we do get another round of lower pressure values spreading out to the north towards Florida and then out to the north northeast as well. So folks, we don't have anything from National Hurricane Center just yet. I'm still giving our own internal weather center developmental probabilities a 0% chance over the next
next 48 hours and a 20% chance over the next seven days, just because we haven't seen a whole lot in the way of big changes. We're still consistent. We're still looking for the threat of development down there, but nothing has really swayed me to increase my own internal forecast just yet. Thank you all for tuning in. We're going to close out the video this wonderful afternoon. I hope everything is great in your world, and it goes without saying that for our folks out there in Mexico, our thoughts, our hearts, and our prayers are with you guys. And once again, if you've made it to the back end of this video, thank you very much for watching, but also tune in tonight at 8 p.m. Tropics Talk. Tonight, guys, we're definitely going to go in depth, not only with Hurricane Otis, but also what it is I have going on in the background that I could really use your guys' help in hopefully setting up and accomplishing. We'll see you all tonight, and then we'll see you again tomorrow for our 6 p.m. Weather Center segment, and then we'll see you on Friday to wrap out the week and get ready for Halloween as we approach the very tail end of October, and we see exactly what the tropics have in store for us before we hit that 30-day threshold before we can fully put the hurricane season behind us. Thank you all once again for joining me this afternoon. We'll see you soon. This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.